Good morning, Ellen. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. What a project that you put yourself in, because this, this is such a great expression of community in the way that there are so many lives here, 12 lives, but yet you have made it one adventure. I am so I'm grateful to you for saying it like that. And it was a challenge, but also so much fun kind of putting all these stories together. It was very important for us to interweave all those characters so that they were popping in and out of everyone's stories. And I hope readers enjoy seeing kind of who they can find in all the different stories. Well, I, I want I want listeners, especially young adult listeners, to understand that this story would be like everybody is on the same school bus, but they've all got different stories. They may have the same experience on being in the bus, but everybody has a different story. And you open that conversation inside this book. Yes, thank you. Um, and I and I think that what's really important is that we are showing uh, kind of like a snippet into the lives of Asian American kids and. And like, especially right now, we're, you know, coming out of the pandemic, we had a lot of Mm anti-Asian sentiment. mm -hmm. It really is about letting Asian American kids know that they really do belong and that they are really an important part of our community, which was missing there when you you, all you heard was go back to China and that kind of like rhetoric that was spewing very... um, very loudly all over the country. You are so right about that because they, that's one of the things that I try to share uh, with, with people that I work with at The Essential Job is that you've got a voice. Use your voice. Don't just, just sit back and watch people. You've got to be able to use that voice. Yes. And authors have the, a responsibility I think, to write the stories that mm-hmm. will make kids, especially children's book authors, to, to really connect children, you know, as both mirrors and windows and sliding doors uh, to give that, you know, open that world up for them, especially for kids who might not have diverse communities. And it might be their first time meeting a diverse character in the pages of a book. Mm-hmm. So that's the way we should be use our voices. Yeah. And you know you know what's really interesting about this is the fact that, you know, how many times have we been to an airport and we pass by people that that look like us but we don't know their journey. We don't know what what their connecting flights are. And and you you are you are teaching new readers that this was a moment. A moment is so important by being present in your now. Then now let's listen to the stories and the experiences. Exactly. And how everything kind of like, you know, moves off of each other cuz we have in you are here, you have our very first story having an incident that occurred at TSA, and it just kind of ripples down to mm-hmm. every story. And, you you know, where you, the interconnections happen, and you don't even realize that another event touched upon the life of someone else who is nowhere near that person or even connected to them. But that ripple effect happens. And I thought that was really interesting. I always call that the pass it forward. In other words, what you're going through right now, if you know, it's it's a choice. And and what are you passing forward that's going to be felt or experienced by somebody else? And and that book opens your eyes and your heart to something like this. That you know how you act and react will affect somebody else. Be aware of it. Exactly. Thank you. And as that writer, you're part of that ripple effect as well. I mean, you're, you're putting this book in forward motion. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I uh, like I said, this this book was um, a book of the heart. It really it started out as a response to a reader who. Um, well, did I mention that I am a founding member of We Need Diverse Books, and that this we had an anthology there called Flying Lessons, and the East Asian story there was um, set in China and not in America, and we had a we had a criticism about that which made Grace Lynn and I very aware of the fact that we had kind of othered our own East Asian American story. And that's why this book became so important to us uh, to kind of to, to create. And of course, since then, that was in 2017, the pandemic happened, anti-Asian sentiment happened, and mm-hmm. it felt so much more important to tell these stories. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why this book came about in response to that. The book we're talking about is titled You Are 12 Authors Meeting in One Community of Expression. I, my, my last book was 53 Pieces of Poetry that Happened to Tell a Story. What was it like for you to be able to interweave these stories together and to make sure that you know there, there was you know that, that forward motion to take that reader you know from the beginning of the book to the end of the book? Uh, it, well, it was a challenge <laughs> and it was also great fun. Like It was kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together because 
we we had lots of Zoom meetings and we had lots of long talks about how to connect all of our stories together. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I, at one point, I had a detailed Excel spreadsheet <laughs> where I was just tracking every character, where they were, where they were going, what they were doing. Uh, and uh, it, it, I, it, it, that's the reason I ended up doing that last story in order to kind of make sure all the puzzle pieces fit by the end. Uh, so it was, it was a challenge, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, it was po possibly the best experience of my life as an author too. And, and and how did you decide to put Aerie in Chapter Five going into Natalie? What what was what was the, the the level of play there? Because I mean, to me, it's it's like you know selecting the songs for a brand new album. How do you know where to put the song? <laughs> yeah, actually, it really came down to my Excel spreadsheet and what was happening at that moment in that person's story and how we would see those characters mm -hmm. kind of interconnect. Like, you know, who's walking by, who, who, who's, tra you know, whose plane has uh, just landed and, and who's going to the food court. Like, all those reasons kind of help figure out where the stories would get placed. Uh, but the one thing we did know, we, we knew Christina Sundervat would start this, the book and that I would end it. So that was one thing we were set from the beginning. I would love to see how many people are going to stop into the the uh, bookstore at an airport because I know we have a huge bookstore at our airport and and they're going to grab this and they're going to read it on their flight across this country or to another city because this is absolutely one of those kinds of books. Well, thank you. I love that. I hope it's in every airport bookstore too, and I do hope everyone will read it. I think it's a, it's a great read, but I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn from this project? Because this has got to be an open door for you as a creative person. Because, you know, now that you have the book, your art didn't stop. No, you're, you're, you're creating new ideas and new things every day. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing I learned was how, how much fun you can have when you have a big group of people who are like-minded and are on a mission to do something good for the world. And that, like, I, I love these projects. It's why we do anthologies for We Need Their Best Books also, because we have these uh, moments where, you know, 12 people get together and say, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to do it for the kids, because we want the kids to know that we see them mm -hmm. and that we know that they belong. And that's why this book is called You Are Here, because it's all about belonging. And so when you have a mission uh, and you know, good people to work with, it makes that project a joyous experience. Isn't this one of those moments where where an Asian child will go, this this is m my life. This, this is about me. I, I see me in this story. I, I've never had a book about me. Oh, I absolutely hope so. Because, see, for me growing up, there were very few books about Asian, yeah. with Asian main characters. And I never felt like I was American enough because of racism and people yelling at me, go back to China, I'm Korean, or literally telling me I don't belong here in the U.S., the only country I knew. And it was, and it still is painful. And it's always this reminder that there are going to be some people who look at me and will always be a foreigner. And I didn't see myself in the pages of the book until I read the Joyla Club, uh, Joyla Club in college. And that was a, a life transforming moment for mm -hmm. me because I felt seen. Uh, it made me recognize my own Asian American immigrant family experiences in the pages of a book that everybody was reading. And it was kind of like that eye opening moment where I said to myself, yes, I do belong here. I am an Asian American. I'm American enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, you are here came about from this, this need, the desire not only me, but all the other 11 authors, for everyone to recognize that, you know, we do have a place here. We are, uh, we belong. And that belonging comes also from seeing your stories in the books that everyone reads. Oh, they are going to hear your voice, Ellen. Oh, my God. And I can't I can't oh. thank you enough for sharing that voice as we continue to grow together as a community and as a globe. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I would love to. Okay. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. Thank you.